Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. So what I wanted to show you guys today is a diagram of how I believe that a false unity movement or an ecumenical type movement is going to bring about a one world religion. Now before I jump right into explaining this diagram here, I want to communicate to you guys why this is so important and this false unity movement, how it is so prevalent and it's going under the radar unfortunately in many churches. You have to understand that there is a, a unity type of movement that is going on that is not based on biblical doctrine. It is rather based on experience. It is rather based on just unity for the sake of coming together. And uh, it throws Bible doctrine out the window. It subtly starts to undermine your Bible doctrine and you start to fellowship with people that hold heretical type views. And uh, it's very subtle, so you have to understand that this ecumenical type movement, its ultimate goal is to make it so that uh, truth is so subjective that it doesn't really matter anymore, or Bible doctrine is not the thing that uh, rather unites or divides us. And I want to say that in the Bible, Jesus Christ came and he said that he has not come to bring peace on this earth, but he has rather come to bring division. That is really important to understand. He said in Luke chapter 12, verse 51 through 52, Yea, but I have rather come to bring division. So the Jesus Christ of the Bible is actually one who brings division. And one who brings division out of hate or just for the sake of dividing because you feel like you're better than other people? No, most definitely not. But dividing because of the fact that you have opposing views that cannot come together in harmony. You know, what the uh, false ecumenical movement wants to do is for you to forsake biblical doctrine, forsake biblical values for the sake of coming together in unity. And we see this very much prevalent in uh, just Christian culture and our culture in general. It, you know, even in the, the New Age movement, it's all about bringing things together, coming together in unity. And the only thing that is looked at as bad, pretty much, is division, right? In the New Age movement, everything is accepted. Um, everything can be brought together in unity except uh, Christianity. But one of the big points I wanted to get across is a lot of times in uh, Christian communities nowadays, if you bring up opposing doctrines, if you bring up opposing belief systems to what somebody is promoting, or you call out false teachings, you call out false teachers and things of that nature, you are inherently marked as one that is bringing division. You are inherently marked as a judgmental individual. But you have to understand that it is biblical to call out false teaching. It is biblical to call out heresy. And what this false unity movement is doing is it's undermining that reality. It is trying to erode the possibility of calling out falsehood for exposing falsehood. Because if falsehood and false teaching is no longer being expo exposed, then this false unity movement can be pushed forward the more. And I see this many times with self-professing Christians. When false teaching is called out or, you know, when somebody that's preaching heresy is withstood, people immediately say, God's not pleased with this, you're creating division, you're being judgmental and things of that nature. And I find that very dangerous. I find that very alarming because with that kind of mentality, that helps push this false unity movement. This false unity movement is pushed by nobody ever having any division whatsoever. Now guys, as I'm creating this video, don't get me wrong, I don't believe we should have this uh, us versus them mentality or there's just some small sect of Christianity that has it right and everybody has it wrong. Uh, many times, you know, there's a cultish type mentality with that where you feel like you're the only one with the real form of Christianity. But there are many frauds today. There are many false brethren that are crept in unaware. And there's tons of people today that claim to be Christian, but they've never truly been born again. And according to the Bible, there's two reasons of why we should not have fellowship with people. If they do not have the doctrine of Christ, the Bible says to not bid them God's speed. Don't even let them into your house. Otherwise, you will be a partaker of their evil deeds. So if somebody comes to you, 
and they claim to be of God, and they, you know, they don't have the doctrine of Christ, the Bible is saying, do not give them agreement with them. Do not be in agreement with them. Don't even allow them into your house. And we also see a precedent in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 that if people are claiming to be a brother, they're claiming to be a brother in the Lord, and they're living in open rebellion, open willful sin, like fornication, uh, drunkenness, and so forth, we are not supposed to have fellowship with those people. And uh, I find it very interesting that these two principles of, you know, dividing with people that claim to be Christian because of uh, heretical views or because of them openly living in continual willful sin, those two principles are almost completely um, gone from the practices of most churches. And those two principles need to be eroded so that this false unity movement can be pushed forward. So I want you guys to be aware of that. Look at the verse in 2 John that says, if they do not have the doctrine of Christ, do not bid them Godspeed. But what do we see many prominent evangelical preachers doing today is they are bidding heretics Godspeed. They are shaking hands. They are coming into agreement. They are fellowshipping with people that openly teach and believe in heresy. So to explain a little bit about this diagram right here, ultimately what I believe is that the Catholic Church is the means that is going to unite all of the world's religions as one, and also the Catholic Church is going to try to draw in as many Bible-believing Christians to get them to theologically comp compromise, and then after that to ultimately come back into the Catholic Church. So, you know, the Catholic Church is really trying to bring all of this together. It is the tool that the devil, I believe, will use to try to bring all of these religions together as one. And as far as the Catholic Church bringing these different religions of the world, Hinduism, Islam, Sikhism, Paganism, and so forth, bringing them together, that is just a matter of fact. That is not to, that's not something that's disputable. We see the Pope openly trying to say that he wants to bring all of these religions together. Every year an ecumenical meeting is held with the Pope, called the Conference of Secretaries of Christian World Communion. And the list of participants is staggering. The Anglican Church, World Baptist Alliance, the Orthodox Church, Seventh-day Adventist Church, yes, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the World Lutheran Church, the Mennonite World Conference, the Moravian Church Worldwide, Pentecostals, the Salvation Army, the Quakers, the World Churches of Christ, the World Evangelical Alliance, the World Methodist Church, and the World Council of Churches. These are all coming together to promote unity with Babylon. And one thing that you have to realize is a lot of people that are pushing this false unity, they talk about division, but they talk about it in a way as though, like, uh, you know, we shouldn't divide over our differences. There's such a heavy emphasis on there, there can be unity and diversity. Diversity is so cool. But really, what is the, the, the underlying goal of statements like that is actually to bring unity among people that have opposing uh, views to the Bible. So we see the Pope stand with major prevalent um, different leaders of world religions, uh, different Eastern religions, Hinduism, and so forth. But another thing that I see that is extremely alar alarming on the other end is the Pope is actually starting to unite and has united with many leaders in the different denominations. The protest is over. This was brought about by spirit-filled Pope and spirit-filled Lutherans that got together in the Holy Ghost. Now, take a good look at that picture. The night before, we had a dinner together before we met with, the, with Pope Francis the next day. That many evangelicals in one room. <laughs> uh, folks, you don't get it. We have far more in common than what divides us. When you talk about Pentecostals, Charismatics, Evangelicals, uh, fundamentalist Catholics, 
a Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, on, on, and on, and on. Well, they would all say, we believe in the Trinity, we believe in the Bible, we believe in the resurrection, we believe salvation is through Jesus Christ. These are the big issues. Sometimes Protestants think that Catholics worship Mary like she's another god. But that's not exactly Catholic doctrine. There's the understanding, and, and people say, well, what are the saints all about? Are, you know, you're, why are you praying to the saints? And when you understand what they mean by what they're saying, there's a whole lot more commonality. But the most important thing is, if you love Jesus, we're on the same team. So you can see some of the principles that I've been explaining so far in this video evident in the speech of Rick Warren. He is actually belittling the differences that we have. He is uh, kind of dismissive of those, and he puts a magnifying glass on the idea that we both love Jesus. So he's belittled the differences so much, and then um, you know had an emotional appeal that we all love Jesus. So a very deceptive thing to do, and if you really love Jesus, you would not be in the Catholic Church. You definitely wouldn't be promoting the Catholic Church like Rick Warren is here. I hope you guys can see what uh, Kenneth Copeland and Rick Warren have been doing in these clips here. Extremely dangerous and going against what it says in Second John. And what is extremely dangerous about this then is it starts to provide a link down the row of bringing even Bible-believing Christians via other ministers into a um, agreement with the Catholic Church ultimately. Now that might not happen straightforward, or it might not even happen with many of the Bible-believing Christians. But what we do see today, without a shadow of a doubt, is many uh, prominent evangelical preachers starting to yoke up with the Catholic Church. Francis Chan, Todd White, Kenneth Copeland, so forth, have openly promoted the Catholic Church. And, um, you know, many people that I have even listed off or that are in the thumbnail of this video openly have met with the Pope, shook hands with the Pope, or are promoting unity with the Catholic Church. And this is extremely dangerous. Okay, here's, here's the deal. I believe that the Catholic Church and the Christian Church we're going to come together right now. As Lou Engel taught us, we need to fly united. The only way we can heal a divided nation, a divided world, is with a united church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Even coming in this room and sharing with you, this is really the first time I've spoken to a Catholic crowd. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so, oh yeah, to the Pope, but he was... <laughs> We had him outnumbered. There were mainly like pastors there. Um, yeah, it, it, and it's just, I, I don't want to be that guy that's like, I'm going to bring them all together. You know, everyone says that. I just go, I'm going to take a step. Um, led by the Holy Spirit, I believe. Because I... If I were to guess, and this is not a word from the Lord, I'm very careful to say anything like that. I'm just saying, here's where some thoughts that have gone through my head in the last hour since you can talk to you guys is, could it be that a new generation is rising up that really doesn't care that much? But what we do care about very deeply is that on that day, many are going to say, to Jesus, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this, 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 this? And he's going to say to, you guys, do you hear those words? Depart from me. I never knew you. It's like, whoa. That's that. If you cut Francis Chan open and say, okay, what's inside? I care about that. I don't care what title you give yourself. I'm concerned you don't know God. You don't know him. You can tell me all day you're a Baptist, you're a whatever, I hopper, 
you know, or Catholic or whatever, it's like there are some core doctrines in scripture about seeking righteousness, not of your own, but through Christ. And it's about you knowing him and the seed of God abiding in you. And I see it, I believe I see it, on different individuals, and I don't even know where they're from or what category you put them into, but I don't see it all in one category. I just see it in some people, and maybe that's what the Lord's doing right now, is giving us eyes to see His Spirit in people's lives. You know, I believe your welcoming of, welcoming of me, which I so feel in this room, is not because, hey, Francis came in and says he's Catholic now. Right? <laughs> Only a united church could heal a divided world. And, and of course, this is our prayer just to see the body of Christ act like brothers and sisters. And, I, and I'll say this because I know Catholic terminology, and forgive me, fathers, I know technically we call them separated brethren. I, I, I don't know how I can call this guy a separated brother. <laughs> Because he's closer to me, I feel, than a lot of Catholics. Yeah. And, and, and that's the whole reason I want to invite you guys to events like this, to see people like this and go, oh my God, I, I love him. So I mean, I, I'm going to just let Father Anthony maybe lead with a prayer. And, and if you sit down, I just want to wash your feet real quick. I, I'm just, I'm going to use my sweater to, as a towel. But. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh. Like I said, these things are new. <laughs> I've never had a priest pray over me, and I get four. I, I don't even know if this works. What do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have, and they turn to the only light that they have, and I think that they are saved, and that they're going to be with us in heaven. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There's a wideness in God's mercy. There is. If somebody is promoting unity with the Catholic Church, what are they ultimately going to do is promote unity with all of the world's religions. And ultimately, that's the goal of the New Age, guys. You have to understand the goal of the New Age is to unite everything together as one. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out my video about Gnosticism because ultimately, at the core of the New Age is a Gnostic-type worldview. And um, in Gnosticism, they want to unite all of these things together. In the New Age, they want to unite all of these uh, different religions together to become one. There's a, you know, a doctrine in the New Age called oneness, and it's a false unity. It's a false unity type movement, right? And it actually promotes rebellion against the God of the Bible. Like I said, you can check out my video on Gnosticism and you can learn more about it there. But this whole mentality of, oh, let's all just shake hands, let's all just together and get along and everything like that, or, or you're being harsh, you're being mean, you're being unloving, if you are having division, if you are not coming together in unity, um, they put a very heavy emphasis upon you're not a loving person if you promote division. But Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 12 that he has purposely come to bring division and even to bring division among family members. Now, some of you might be thinking to yourself, why would God want to promote division? Because you have to understand that the truth 
that true biblical doctrine is of such a high value that you cannot unite together with people that hold views that are heretical, that are opposing to that. Once again, I'm not saying we should divide just over small little things. You know, there is actually a very heavy emphasis upon, you know, uh, unity in the New Testament. Jesus Christ prayed in John chapter 17 that his disciples would be one just as him and his Father are one. But now the question has to be asked, what is a true disciple of Jesus Christ? A true disciple of Jesus Christ is not just merely somebody who says, I believe in Jesus. There's so many people today that say they believe in Jesus Christ. The Catholics will say that they believe in Jesus Christ. The Mormons will say that they believe in Jesus Christ. The New Agers will say that they believe in Jesus Christ. Um, Jehovah's Witness, so forth. And we know that these different uh, you know, false religions do not have the true Jesus Christ. So we can obviously understand that not everybody that claims to believe in Jesus Christ is truly a disciple. So therefore, we should not unify with those people. But what this false unity movement does is it actually promotes unity with people that are not disciples of Jesus Christ to begin with. So it's really important that we understand what a true born-again Christian is and how to identify one. And the Bible says in the book of Titus, chapter 1, that if a man is a heretic after the first and second admonition to reject him, to have nothing to do with him, to move on and not have fellowship with him. So people that have heretical views, we should not fellowship with them. We should harshly rebuke them so that they may be sound in the faith, like it also says in Titus and warn them in love, but we should not fellowship with them. You know, you don't mix in with darkness in order to try to evangelize the people. You know, there will be this uh, idea nowadays that we should just mix in with these people, that we should start to yoke with these people, people subconsciously think, so that we can win them to Christ. But the Bible says, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. You do not have to compromise and link arms with people that believe opposite to the doctrine of Christ in order to win them to Christ. You want to be a bright and shining light that, that, that God uses to call them out of the, the darkness. Now I have a little diagram up here in the top right corner of this uh, whiteboard and what I wanted to explain to you guys is kind of how this dangerous uh, unity movement starts to move, right? So there's a couple different people that I have listed right here. If you can't uh, read them all, I'll just read them off. So right here on the very end, you have just a normal Christian at a church, a Bible, a true born-again Christian maybe even, and then you have the pastor of that Christian. And then a very easy example that I could use of this false unity movement would be Todd White, and then Kenneth Copeland, and then the Pope, and then the New Age religion. So you see how it can start to go down right here. The, the Bible-believing Christian might even have a genuine pastor right here. Let's say this, gen this pastor genuinely believes the truth. But then he, he follows Todd White. He likes to, uh, you know, like the teachings of Todd White, but not realizing Todd White actually promotes unity with the Catholic Church. And another individual who promotes unity with the Catholic Church even more is Kenneth Copeland. And Todd White has linked arms with Kenneth Copeland. And Kenneth Copeland has linked arms with the Pope. And the Pope has linked arms with the New Age is, and is trying to bring the world's religions together as one. So you see how this can be very dangerous right here. Now, I'm not even saying that this pastor or this Christian right here are uh, lost, that they're not saved. But because of a lack of discernment on false teachers and uh, not doing research upon who you're following, you know, there can be even beliefs coming down from New Age, from the Pope, from Kenneth Copeland, all the way down to this Christian because of this uh, link right here. Now, I'm not trying to communicate that this Christian right here should just break off and go and be alone and not have any fellowship whatsoever. But what I am trying to communicate is this Christian and this pastor need to have discernment on these prominent evangelical leaders and who they follow, and then also who these prominent evangelical leaders have yoked themselves up with, because many of them have linked arms with the Pope or have been seen promoting the Catholic Church. So hopefully from gaining true discernment from the Lord Jesus Christ and thoroughly studying their Bibles, this link right here can be broken, and then ultimately these false teachings will not come down the whole line and, uh, you know, people will stop following people that are false teachers. Now, we have to be graceful with people, and I realize there's a lot of people that just lack discernment, and they are not discerning those who they follow. So I'm not saying that, you know, anybody who ever said the name of Todd White, that we should ultimately just defellowship them and tr treat them as a non-Christian. 
But still, nevertheless, hopefully through even this video, you can learn that, okay, I see Todd White in a video promoting the Catholic Church, or I see Todd White in a video with Kenneth Copeland saying that Kenneth Copeland is his mentor and helping him out on all these things, and Kenneth Copeland openly is, you know, shaking hands with the uh, Pope and spending time with the Pope, and that is extremely dangerous. In my mind, if I found that out about Todd White, some major red flags would be going off in my mind. Now, there's many other false doctrines that Todd White promotes, such as fighting against the deliverance ministry, such as not believing that we have a sinful nature, uh, you know, pushing uh, prosperity type of uh, movement. N nevertheless, that's not what this point uh, of this video is about. The point that I'm trying to get across is that uh, we need to truly have discernment and make sure that we do not, you know, join ourselves into this false unity movement and we forsake biblical doctrine uh, because of something like this happening right here. I've come to understand that diversity is divine. It's division that's diabolic. And he said, and I give them the glory, pragmatic reason, so that they may be one. It's the glory that glues us together, not the doctrines. The greatest assurance of your salvation and of your faith is not knowing doctrine. So that they may be one. It's the glory that glues us together, not the doctrines. Brothers and sisters, Luther's protest is over. Is yours. Because ultimately what happens is somebody's a Bible-believing Christian, and they don't ever think that they'll link arms with the Catholic Church initially. I'm sure many of these uh, prominent evangelical preachers, they started off as, you know, believing Orthodox, believing the truth, not like the Orthodox religion, but believing in the Orthodox, um, you know, beliefs and uh, theological statements of the Christian Church. And then they start to fellowship with uh, people that hold heretical views, and they start to become theologically compromised. And when they fellowship with these people that are heretics, you know, that is the first thing that goes usually. Usually it's not that you just forsake biblical doctrine, but what happens first is people start to mix with uh, people that promote heresy, that promote uh, modernism or even uh, Catholic type doctrines, right? They just start to fellowship with those people. And then they no longer call out those false doctrines. And then before you know it, they're, you know, just pretty much in agreement with those people that hold heretical views. And then they themselves eventually start to adopt those same beliefs beliefs as the heretics. So some important takeaway points that I want you guys to get from this video is please do not get angry or inherently believe that people are promoting division just because they are calling out falsehood. If a minister is calling out false teachers, if a pastor, um, which many of them unfortunately don't nowadays, if a pastor is calling out falsehood and false teaching, please do not inherently think that they are promoting division because ultimately a lot of times it actually promotes unity, it actually promotes clarity to point out false doctrine to point out false teachers because the false teachers and the false teaching is actually the one that is creating division in the body of Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 16 verse 17 through 18, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. So the Bible is saying right here, if somebody is promoting doctrine that is contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, they are actually creating division because they are getting Christians to believe in falsehood, Christians to believe in lies. And now there's actually division because there are some people that are truly born again, but they believe falsehood. Now you see that there's division created in the body of Christ when false teachers put falsehood in. Because then the Christians that come along with good biblical doctrine are actually looked at as promoting division, are actually looked at as enemies when they're trying to correct those that have been fed false teaching. You know, the Bible puts an emphasis on unity, of having unity of mind and unity of doctrine. And when false teachers get people to believe falsely, that actually hinders unity in the body of Christ. Because now two even genuinely born-again Christians believe different. One believes the truth, one believes 
believes biblical doctrine and another one believes in false teaching and then you know there's actually division promoted in that scenario the bible says in acts chapter 2 verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers so before they broke bread together before they prayed together and before they had fellowship together what did it say that they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine so according to the book of acts right here in chapter 2 if somebody is not a continuing in the apostles doctrine um the doctrine of the bible then how can we pray with them how can we have fellowship with them how can we eat bread with them i understand it may appear nice like you're trying to win the person over you're trying to you know be genuinely kind to the person but actually the thing that wins them over to christ more the thing that really gets them to be convicted is when you do not have fellowship with them when you don't mix in with them when they hold heretical views or are openly living in willful sin. And notice how here in Acts chapter 2 that went in order. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and, and then it says they broke bread and had prayer and had fellowship. The fellowship and prayer and breaking of bread did not happen first, and then the doctrine came. They believed in the true doctrine, and then those other things came afterwards. So should we have unity in the body of Christ? Yes, most definitely. And I believe there is truly an amazing thing where we can have unity together and, uh, you know, we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I think that's an amazing thing. I'm not trying to take away from that whatsoever by this video. You know, um, I actually do understand the fact that the enemy does try to create division in the body of Christ. And that's by no means what I'm trying to do in this video. You have to understand um, that there is a false unity and there's also division. The enemy is trying to do both. He's trying to create division among true Christians, and then he's also trying to get true Christians to unify, um, to have unity with uh, heresy and uh, falsehood. So I find that very interesting. But nowadays, people look at it as backwards, as though you know the people that are saying we should stay away from heretical views and heretical people, that is creating division. And then when people try to bring unity by teaching the truth and exposing falsehood, that is actually looked at as division. So it's really backwards, and I hope your guys' understanding is being flipped to the right way as I'm going through this video. So another point that I want you guys to take away from this video is that when you see a man of God, another Christian, pointing out falsehood, pointing out error, pointing out false teachers, do not attack that person. Realize that that is a commendable thing. It takes a lot of strength, courage, and discernment to really call out false teaching accurately, and it's something that is not an easy thing to do, you know? So um, I, it, it only makes it more difficult for falsehood to be pointed out when, um, you know, individuals attack the person that is trying trying to stand up for the flock. You know, I find it very interesting. The very shepherds that are trying to protect the flock are the ones that are being attacked by the sheep many times nowadays. You know, another verse that I really like is Romans chapter 12, verse 18. It says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So we should not have these petty arguments and disagreements and fights because those are a reality, don't get me wrong. But when people are pushing heresy that is leading people to hell or yoking up with a Catholic Church that is going to unite the one world religion, that is something that needs to be called out. You know, eventually, if we keep heading down this path of nobody can call out falsehood, nobody can call out false teachers, you know, that is how the false unity is pushed. You know, I, I find it interesting, like, well, at what point would some of these people be satisfied? Like, we can't even have an opposing opinion, like, you're looked at as judgmental and, uh, you know, an angry individual if you even say something a little opinionated off. You know, in the early church, this would not be something that was uh, stood for. In the early church, they called out heresy. You have to understand this. I don't see why people want to stray away from that, because then it helps the flock to not be confused, and the flock of God actually unifies with the truth more clearly when falsehood and false teachers are called out. One of the last points that I want you guys to take away from this video is be very careful when you see people overtly trying to push for unity so much. And when you see them subtly trying to push for unity with people that are not brethren, with people that don't hold the doctrine of Christ. You know, many of these people that are a part of this ecumenical movement, they will take the verses about unity, great verses about unity, um, and they 
they will take them out of their context or they will apply them to people that are not genuine Christians. This is what you have to understand. Those verses about unity are in the context of true born again Christians. Another verse that I wanted to leave you guys off with is in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So we should not be fellowshipping with people that are walking in darkness, that are walking in spiritual darkness. And spiritual darkness, um, you know, can apply to people that hold heretical views. Um, we see in Galatians chapter 5 that heresy is actually listed as one of the works of the flesh, that if people hold on to that, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I don't believe we should have this attitude where we're just like heresy hunters and we're trying to call out anybody and everybody, and that's our ultimate goal is just to try to, you know, expose certain different types of people. There needs to be a healthy balance, right? If you just look throughout the New Testament even, there are many points where people claim to be of God and then true men of God came along and openly rebuked them in front of everybody. Even in the book of Galatians, we see an account where Paul called out the uh, apostle Peter um, you know, for doing something that was promoting heresy. He rebuked him in front of everybody. This wasn't something that was done in a private manner. Now, if somebody sins against you personally, yes, you need to go to that person privately and discuss the matter. But there's a difference between that and somebody, somebody publicly teaching falsehood, somebody uh, publicly promoting heresy and heretical type people. You have to understand where Jesus said to go to your brother in private. That's a different context than when people are publicly teaching falsehood. Falsehood. When a false teacher is teaching falsehood, they're not personally sinning against anybody necessarily per se. They could be, but you know, for the individual who is calling out that falsehood, that false teacher didn't necessarily uh, personally sin against that individual. So, you know, like for an example, when Paul called out false teachers, when he called out uh, the false prophet in the book of Acts, he didn't just go and approach them privately. Even like I said with the situation with Peter, who was a true born again Christian, he rebuked him publicly in front of all because of the danger, the danger for the flock if it was not openly rebuked. Another concept I want you guys to be familiar with is the difference between fellowship and yoking up with somebody and then, you know, spending time with somebody or evangelizing to somebody. Somebody who doesn't necessarily have the true doctrine, that doesn't mean you have to be a Pharisee and be like, oh, I can't touch that person or I can't even, you know, look at them. I need to have hatred towards them or something like that. But what you do need to understand is you cannot yoke up with that person in agreement in your doctrine. You are not striving for the same goal if you have the same uh, if you don't have the same doctrine. If you don't have the same doctrine, and I'm talking about foundational doctrines, how could you be striving towards the same goal? Because out of your beliefs flow how you function in your life, flows the different actions and course of life that you take. So if somebody has a completely different belief system than you, then you are not going to be striving for the same goal. If you yoke up together, it's not ultimately not going to work out. And many times what, end up, what ends up happening is people compromise to start believing the falsehood when they yoke up with people that are teaching uh, falsehood and heresy. So anyways, guys, there's a lot more that could be said, but I wanted to make this kind of a compact video and not go on for too terribly long and uh, you know ultimately I just want to say let's have a healthy balance where we're not yoking up with people that are holding heretical views but at the same time we're not creating division because just because we understand the truth about the false unity movement doesn't mean that we aren't subject to tax about um, you know unrighteous type of division right I really want to hammer that point home once again that I'm trying to promote a balance in this video not that we should just bite and devour one another and that we should just call out people if they have a little bit of a different opinion, but if they have forsaken, you know, biblical foundational doctrines that are essential to the faith, the Bible says that we should not have fellowship with those people. So anyways, guys, I hope that you guys were blessed by the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you guys are new to the channel. If this is your first time here. Um, let me know what you guys think about this video down in the comment section. I would love to, uh, to hear from you. So anyways, guys, I will talk to you guys next time. May you be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.